and welcome to Magathia Builder Worlds. This is a Burrows and Badgers build. Simple. Um, right, what are we doing this time? Well, I've got some stuff coming up in the next little while which are going to be uh, slightly bigger builds. I've got some kind of cool ideas of B&B &B that kind of cropped up. But this is going to be a quick build. I hope I'm going to build a shipwreck. But not a shipwreck using the uh, Glimtide shipwreck uh, that Games Workshop so conveniently provide for people. I'm going to provide something bigger. Um, seen a ship made recently. I'm going to also be using again another piece of Playmobil. I love this game. We all know that. I've established that over the many videos I've made about B&B &B already. One of the things I like about this game is the uh, character development, the warband development, the campaign kind of setting and system. Um, one of the things you get in here is uh, the off-duty section. This is what, page 92 of the very excellent rulebook by Michael Lovejoy. Um, and in it, your characters, if they've survived a battle, get to go wandering. Having played a number of campaigns now of Burrows and Badgers, one thing that has thrown up to me is that <coughs> you're better off going to a battle if you're not doing very well, scooting around and then getting out as quick as you can so you could send your guys wandering. You stand more chance of making more advances, more money, more survivability in the campaign by doing the wandering on the off-duty than you do actually playing the game. So rewards for fighting in the skirmishes sometimes aren't as good as they can be in here. There's also pretty much absolutely no peril involved in going wandering in this perilous world. So for my new campaign that I'm going to be running with my gaming group, um, we're mixing that up, we're going to write a new wandering chart because we've used this one for ages and everybody knows what you get all the time. Um, instead I've decided that I'm going to uh, use some of these wanderings as a uh, reasons for having a, a scenario, um, getting setting an actual game up. And then that way there, the high reward wanderings become tabletop scenarios, which will be pretty cool. And the first one I'm starting with then um, is result number 14 on the wandering chart, which is a sunken ship. You have discovered the location of a wrecked trading ship and can dive down to loot its hold at low tide. We are gonna make a wrecked trading ship uh, which we're going to be able to use for games of Burrows and Badgers. The whole idea being, apart from anything else, that um, we'll be able to use my ship rules and our warbands will be able to sail out to the wreck, fight over the wreck and then take what's there. Which I think is kind of like a nice variation on a take and hold kind of scenario uh, or go and grab the loot or whatever. So from that point of view, that's what we're aiming to do. And to do that, to do that, I just so happen to have in the massive, massive, vast collection of CAC that's in the garage, which my wife keeps telling me that I should be getting rid of, by the way. Um, I've got this. Yeah, conveniently, Playmobil do actually make a wrecked pirate ship. There we go. Um, it's got a hole missing there, and the whole stern is missing and the rest of it, but even when you stick it on a flat board like that, and there's obviously some work that's got to be done with it. Um, we're kind of like looking at a wrecked ship. So that is what is going to happen. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to turn this wrecked ship into the centerpiece for a scenario for Burrows and Badgers. I'm going to need some hardboard. I've got my wrecked ship. I might have to stick a bit of island or, or rock or something in there. I think the ship's wrecked upon it. Um, and then we're going to just going to, yeah. Lots of water. This should not be... He says, touch wood, touch plastic wood. Um, this should not be an overly complicated build. However, you all know me, and I do have a habit of making them slightly more complicated than they need to be necessarily. So, um, as there again, there is no plan for this kind of thing. We're just going to see where this takes us um, best crack on. I'm pretty sure I can find the mast that goes in this as well, and even a bowsprit and stuff. But, uh, yeah, there's some work to do. It's a nice basis. Okay, let's go. That's fine. Good, 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 good. Okay, so here we are. Um, I've cut a piece of... Uh, hardboard for this to go on and it is, let's have a look, uh, 14 inches just under by uh, 10 so it's not an insubstantial piece of terrain this which is fine because it's going to go in the middle of a, a watery board I should think without an enormous amount more other terrain on it because you need when you're playing with ships a fair amount of room to manoeuvre. We can see that the actual Playmobil itself 
it's a pretty good start. Um, I might end up decking over this with my own bolster because I could work that better. But the actual ship is great, the shape is cool. Uh, I'm going to have water lapping up over the back here. I might trim down some of this under here. This is what's kind of making it sit so high. Uh, so I could cut some of that out. And that's going to have water inside it as well. Kind of neat. So I've drawn onto my rectangle um, of hardboard the rough outside shape of this piece of train. It was always nice when you're doing things like water and stuff to have it kind of um, uh, random. It doesn't really matter. I don't have to follow the lines too much. So I could. And then what I've got here is this is the outline of the ship. Uh, and then uh, if I had another pen, which I freaking don't. It's not bloody typical when you want one, you ain't got one, ain't you? Fuck's sake. Come on, there's got to be another one around here somewhere. Sitting under a sodding desk. Oh, look, there he is. Okay. <laughs> so, here's the ship. And uh, um, this then, I'm going to think I'm going to have a kind of rocky kind of bit of rock kind of sticking out there. Uh, but clearly, the ship is rammed up against a bit of a pinnacle. Maybe a couple of layers. Um, 25 millimeter thick, maybe. Um, we'll see how it go. See if I can find some XPS foam that thickness uh, to cut it out. If not, well, 50 millimeter low density polystyrene, which would do the job almost as well, I think. Uh, so first things first is cut out my hardboard, uh, redeck if I need to. Um, and then uh, trim a little bit of the bottom of this off, I think, just so it sits a little lower. Although I don't need to, but I can cut these lugs off. If I cut those lugs off, that might make a bit of a difference. Let's uh, give that a go. Oh, Support. Wow, <clears throat> so. I have my pile of starting cutter, heat one. And my 20, my 50 millimeter piece of uh, styrene, which I'm cutting and trimming, hopefully to the right height. This end here is going to slot underneath the deck, underneath the wreck part of the ship, so the ship sitting on the rock. This back bit doesn't matter too much. Um, I want to carve off a bit. It'll be flat enough to place figures on. And other parts, it could be rocky arch. I might carve with a knife. See how much I can make it look like rock with a hot wand. Drops right down low at this end. So. I quite like the idea of having a large slab of rock sticking up out of the water so and as it's a large slab of rock it will have had been worn away over time there's nothing that jagged pretty sure that this plane wheel toy must actually come with an island of some kind of but I haven't seen it so it's not in the cack box so I don't know where it is don't know if I ever even had it right I need to you regularise the uh, these bits a little bit. So just from a making space point of view and speed, I'm using the heat one to start off with, but I may well end up using a knife making mess in the end because low density polystyrene is really messy when you work with it, so you have to. Cutting it with a heat one is great because there's, apart from some stringy fibrous stuff, you don't get very much mess at all. Well, it's good if you work in a well ventilated area when you're doing this, of course, because uh, it's melting polystyrene, so it's not, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not really good for you. But, hey, okay, so let's take all that away. Stick that 
I'm doing this entirely by eye. As you can see at the moment, uh, I haven't cut enough away here. Was I even in shot? Yes, it is. Yeah. I'm gonna cut some off here, but I'm gonna make this lower and thinner. It's quick. And it's, <laughs> of course, the other problem with it is not at all precise. The heat one will melt all sorts, so you have to be fairly careful and also fairly bold. Uh, let's just cut out a bit more around here. Go out that way. Tear that bit off. Right now, I'm sliding under there a little bit better. Still, really needs to come down lower around here. That way. Okay, that's good. Still a bit more, nearly there, but that's going to work really well as a rock. So I have now cut down the bottom of this, made a rocky island, worked out where it's all going to lay slightly differently to how I originally drew it on here, but it's all going to go in there anyway. Actually, my biggest problem right now is this bit here. It's clashing with this bit, so I'm actually going to cut a chunk out of the island there. It wasn't part of this bit now, that wasn't planned at all kids, we're just going to get in there let the wand heat up and cut that out, it's not needed so come on, come on, come on there we go that's what you think is doing great I have to change something but that's fine, so I'm going to cut that out That's better. And now it goes right under there. Any gaps, and there are gaps, I'll fill with uh, the fill up that I use for water as well. So, so now I'm going to stick these two elements down onto the base. Um, polystyrene and uh, the plastic of the plane build toy doesn't work go great together. So, uh, what I'm going to do is first of all, just stick down the plane build toy, and for that, I'm going to use. Uh, U hoop all purpose clear solvent based adhesive. Gonna put it on any points that touches the base as best I can. Which is gonna be much of that because that's gonna be where the water goes, but there might be the odd point around there. Okay, so got some shipwreck on going into the board. Yep. And now, of course, what I'm going to do is um, stick the island down. Now, the island is not going to work, or the island, the little rocky outlet thing, is not going to work with Yoohoo because if I use Yoohoo on it, of course, it will melt. So, um, from where we are with that, I'm going to have to use uh, good old fashioned Gorilla wood glue. Gorilla wood glue will hold it really well, so from that point of view. Let's say me if I can get the bloody lid off it. Never a pair of mold grips around when you want them, is it? Um, Gorilla Glue is an excellent PVA. Uh, that will be the perfect thing for sticking that down. Then what I'm going to have to do is leave it all for a few hours. And for sticking the uh, island down, I'm going to be using Gorilla Wood Glue. It's my go-to PVA for doing this kind of job now. Glue all across the base. And when this is stuck on, uh, I'll then leave this model, I have to put it somewhere flat, and leave it to dry for a few hours. 
Uh, because uh, it's time for all the glues to go off. Take a bit of polystyrene there, just move that across. So glue over the entire base of that. Uh, actually, the best thing to do as it goes is then glue. Where the rock is going to go as well, Whoop, without moving my arm, my ship. I'm going to give it five minutes for the two glues to start going off. Then I'm going to stick them together, and that, and that tends to act as a pretty much like a contact adhesive. It's very good stuff. Right, so I've decided to cheat with this model. I was originally going to put um, bolts all over the decks. But actually what I decided to do is I'm going to, I'm using my heat wand now, to cut in lines into the decking to shorten the planks. And that way, make it look like decking if I can. Just random cuts, they'll take a little bit of sand to get rid of the bits where it's come out of there, but I'm hoping that. That will add to the plankiness of the whole thing. This is a very quick, well, quick in terms of Magrathea Builder Worlds, very quick scenery build. I want this on the table really soon, so um, this is a kind of shortcut. Don't know what it's going to look like. Might be epic. It might be terrible. I kind of think it's going to be alright, but. Going for an overall effect here, so from that point of view, it's not absolute be all and end all. But the blanks are quite good anyway on this. So I reckon they'll look pretty neat. So I'm going to go back to it with a knife and cut bits off. Yeah. Smoke, 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 and there we go. Okay, so I don't normally put water on models this early um, because I haven't even done the texture of the, the rock but I want to see what it looks like so I'm going to add water in here and around here get it lapping up there and I'm going to also going to use the same filler to fill in all the way down here um, and around the prow um, and then I'm going to leave this bit over here blank for the moment so I can sort out rock and stuff so I'm using good dry and poly filler in a tube. Hopefully going to squirt out and just go blah. There we go. Let's have a look. There it goes. Let's have a bit around in there. The plan being that I'm going to have water coming up over the edges of the wood. I'm going to use a wet brush in a minute. Get it all in place. And then this bit here obviously won't be painted as Water, it's going to get squidged down there and be made to look like rock. And in there too. That will also help stick the boat in place because it's only stuck on the baseboard in minimal contact, whereas this will help lock it all in. So, lid back on there for the minute. Brush! Wet. Oh, just pack it in. I hope. And then the painting of this is going to make it look shippy. He said, optimistically. And this is all then going to be. I mean, in some ways, I could just use polyfiller over the entire rock first of all and then texture it, which might be a plan. Uh, but first of all, we're going to do this. So. Yeah, 
this way then the hold is full of water the scenario in the rule book talks about when the shipwreck is found where whoever whichever character finds the shipwreck goes diving on it and finds loot treasure to loot so from that point of view uh, it's kind of cool I think if the hold of the ship is hold and bilges is full of water this is a, obviously much bigger a much bigger vessel than the um, sailing ship I made the other week this four deck alone is much much bigger so we're going to fill that up with water although inside the ship it needs to be kind of fairly still it doesn't need to be churned up quite so much so. I'm not sure I'm going to do about smoothing all this in Not that it matters too much because it could just be the water lapping through the holes and moving around. So, okay, so I uh, changed my mind. I thought I wasn't going to uh, cover the whole thing being filler, but I have done. Uh, what I'll probably do then is kind of backtrack and um, fill the uh, or cover the rock uh, that I want to be rock in sand and gravel um, and the rest can be mud but this way here I'm just using some water now it's been on for a little while just smoothing out some of this and again like earlier I'm just going to have to let it dry. So far this whole model has been just a process of do a thing, stick a thing, let it dry. And that's where I'm at again pretty much. But it's kind of cool because I've got these two, I like these you know, two pools of water for characters to dive in and search in. But nice this is great because there's loads of flat surface here. I'm pretty sure I've got the mask that goes in this. I have also got um, a bow sprit. He says, reaching out and finding it. This bow sprit is made to go in here, although it's going to be way too long, so it's going to stick out of the end. So I think what I'm going to do is going to take a pair of clippers or something, cut that, and break it, and maybe have it hanging or floating around. Now I've got all the water on, I'm going to add some other detritus, maybe other bits of wood sticking up or floating about, but you know, it's kind of cool. So. This would be rock here. Like I said, it should be a pretty straightforward model. Um, straightforward from a paint job point of view. Um, Cause it's gonna be water, rock, rotten wood. And that will look kinda cool. But it will look really great in the middle of a, uh, a table where two ships or more are sailing to get to it I hope so let's see how that works out time to leave it to dry could get on with the Necromunda model in the meantime couldn't I really that would make sense right then <clears throat> my filler is all dry you can see some shiny bits possibly this is this is why I added PVA to uh, make sure the whole model stuck down to the base probably because there was a few contact issues um, I've taken the wrecked mast that the, came with the toy and filled in the back which now needs a bit of a clean up and that was sitting there and that will look kind of cool and as you can see I've chopped off the front of the bowsprit mainly so it doesn't stick too far out over the base uh, but also adds to the wrecked thing now the next problem is the fact that although I'm keeping the uh, I'm not adding balsa to this one, I'm putting a few kind of like planky bits, it's still quite smooth. And well, there's a bit of wreck added to it. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna have a go at taking this here wire brush and I'm just, just gonna give the whole model as best I can a good kind of brushing over, scraping over, try and tear up the decks a little bit and get give add some texture to make it easier to, to paint and to weather the whole thing that little bit more. 
So now then I'm going to take Mod Podge, I'm going to go all over the rocky part, cover that in sand, uh, and that will go off, and then that eye I can paint that up as sand, and then I can start uh, thinking about if I want to add any other details to the ship itself. I mean, in many ways, it doesn't need a lot in the way of detail, uh, to be quite honest with you, because it's just a location for the uh, fig the other characters to come in and it's the middle of the battlefield or the middle of the sea battle battle water whatever uh where the uh scenario is they've found the sunken ship they've got to get aboard dive in here and pull out whatever's in there fight off the enemy um so uh it doesn't have to be overly cluttered with detail but it might be quite nice to have a few sheepy bits on it anyway let's give this a bit of a scrub and see what happens the wire brush thing's a bit of an experiment, to be honest. I don't know if it's going to work, but um, uh, it's got to do something. It's got to give me a better texture to work with, I reckon. So, from that point of view, let's give it a go. I'm literally, you can't even see, can you? Put the camera back down here. I'm literally just going over all as best I can. Plastic on the model. Um, and that's it. Yeah, it's quite good actually. It's taking away the smooth surface. What I might do in a moment is take a sharp knife and gouge into a few of the paint squirt. And again, put extra. It certainly is going to make it easier, more better texture to paint. Let's have a go on the outside. You can see maybe the difference you can certainly see it on the inside. Just scarring that plastic, making it a bit whiter. Means it should be a little easier to paint. Flame the bill. He's always finished really nicely. Get down this side a little bit where the rocks are. Now I'm going to guard it with a standing off to try and gouge out some of the decks a little bit, I think. <coughs> well, stupidly, of course, I don't need to use a standing knife to do this digging in thing. You might have seen me use these before in um, other videos. I can't remember which. Somebody who's watched a load would probably be able to tell me. These are little craft chisels. Pick these up at any decent craft shop. Um, this one's a nice V cut, so uh, it will just dive straight into the plastic. And I can wreck, put some nasty scratches in. Anything to help kind of weather it a little. <laughs> Again, make it easy, nicer to paint. Uh, and also to yeah, just improve the overall kind of like look of the thing. The more I could do to make it look less like a, just a box standard kind of like kids toy, the better really. The more, and while I'm desperate to try and keep it clutter free, I want it to look as effective as I can when it's on the tabletop. So for the sake of about a fiver, this little set of Chisels is really good. I thoroughly recommend them. I haven't really worked out a way of sharpening them, mind off they've uh, been used, but they're so dirt cheap that it's just as easy to buy another set to be honest. <coughs> anyway, let's have a go at this and see what it looks like in a minute. <coughs> Alright, so digging out the chisels was a really good thing. All these beggars, bad boys, being really useful. Um, you can see here. Big gouges across the decks, 
and then to the side. Well, oh, into the side of the ship there, or down, down this side, and on the gunnels too. So hopefully that is now enough kind of damage. Um, now I'm going to get the Mod Podge out. I'm going to cover this bit of rock in sand. That's the next job on this particular little model. Coming along nicely. <coughs> I'll set it, it'll be quick. There we go. So, Mod Podge, Mod Podge, Mod Podge. Come on, you've seen enough of these to know that's what I use. So, Mod Podge, great form of arty PVA. I'm going to slap this on all the rocky bits. Uh, note the disgusting colour of the brush, that's fine. Uh, so this is going on all of here and then basically I'm going to pour on um, coral sand, budgie sand if you like from a pet shop, budgie sand, it's got little tiny bits of crushed shell in it and it's not just sand it's, it's shell as well which gives Nice texture, that's what I tend to use in all my terrain. It's good for painting that way. What I might do when that's all dry, I want to get to the point of painting the water on this. I may well go back, add a bit more um, polyfiller over the top to uh, have the water coming up over the stone, as opposed to the other way around. So, Mod Podge all round over all the bit that clearly looks like a stony islandy bit. Nearly there. Pull the glue up from the bottom. I don't want those glue sagging down the bottom. Round there. Ship wet stuck on, notice that my rocky bit has got a nice flat surface on the top that I can put figures on. Right, okay. Uh, brush in there. Coral sand. Quite a lot of shell in this one actually. Over the box, handfuls of it. Here we go. I mean it's mostly the sand that sticks on. Easy job. Push it back up so it sticks under the glue. Tip off the excess into the box lid. Stroke all over the work surface, all over the floor, all over me. One rocky outcrop that a boat has crashed into. Alright, gotta put that to one side to dry. I'm kind of stuck now because all my projects are dry. Right then, next process has got to be undercoating. This has been covered in Mod Podge, sealed all the plaster, the decks all scuffed up, we're all good to go. So now it needs a black primer. I think, because the vast majority of it's brown, I'm gonna then go over with a Rover Russet Brown as well, I think, to spray up a lot of it too, the woodwork. So, let's go take it down the garage, get it sprayed. It's a lovely sunny afternoon today, take, take no time to dry. Okay, so here comes the paint job then. Um, the, uh, I've put a couple of base coats of grey on the rock. That's had, uh, what, Mechanicus and... Uh, administrator on grey on it, that's got more grey to go on there. Now I'm painting 
the all the woodwork on the deck. I'm really pleased with the gouging and the scoring with the chisels. That's given some great texture to paint. Um, which is kind of neat and now I'm kind of highlighting. So I'm doing all of this dry brushing. Uh, <coughs> the model was um, kind of the woodwork on the top. I'd already sprayed black and then had a Rover russet brown, courtesy of Halfords. Uh, put on it light coats and now I've put on Mornfang brown and the Mornfang and XD88 brown mix. Um, and now I'm doing a Morgoth's bone dry brush on top of that. Uh, all Citadel paints, of course, because that's what I use. Um, if the ship was okay, I'd probably stop there, but <coughs> um, it's wrecked. So I'm going to paint the water in. I'm then also going to go back to this paint green and blue kind of glazes on it, or kind of ink washes on it to represent kind of rotten wood and that kind of thing. So I need to finish dry brushing up. The stonework out here, that needs another light grey and then some other bleach kind of colours on it there. Again some seaweed and stuff and then the outside of the ship and the So if this is, like I said at the start of this video, a really quite straightforward model. I'm hoping it's gonna be kind of eye catching and effective. I'm painting all the woodwork the same. So uh the mast is getting the same kind of rough paint over harder because there's not that much texture to it. So uh We'll just bring the different browns out there. I'm doing this pretty quickly. I want this on the table tomorrow. I don't know what day it is. It's Monday. Um, I wanna, I'm getting all the Benfield stuff out and doing a thing with it, hopefully, tomorrow. So this I really want finished this evening. Late at night already, but um, not too impossible to do because it's... <coughs> Yeah, a really simple model, but I think it's going to look really, really cool with ships around it on a watery base table and being the, the centre point to a game. So from that point of view, it's kind of neat. So I think I've pretty much done all the woodwork I need to do for the moment. I'm going to go back to the rock. Paint some more grey on here. Um, going to go with another layer of administratum grey. And then find something even lighter than that grey sea, I think. Uh, which will then do it. Although I'm not cleaning my brush in between Morgoth Brown and Administratum Grey. Dry brush. Literally wipe it off, put it on. And the nice thing is, is the texture of the coral sand on this with big bits of shell and coral. It means it's, it's brilliant for dry brushing, absolutely brilliant. Um, so, uh, yeah, very quick but effective paint job. The, the top of the rock might have some flop put on it in the end, represent that kind of like weed, oozy weed you get on this kind of rock. But yeah, on the whole, it's coming together real quick, which is very satisfying. Now I've got to decide on the colour for my ship. Uh, as you can see at the minute, it's rather messy here because the dry brushing is never a clean and precise form of painting. Because the outside of the ship is going to need a little bit more care taken to that. And I'll either go with a dark green or a dark blue or a dark red light, pretty much my ship on the whole. Right, let's find a different grey to go on top of that. Basic paintwork on the shipwreck done then. Um, greys on the rocks, browns, uh, dry brushed, we've gone for a kind of kind of olive green on the actual ship itself. Um, that is going to need some detailing, all the gouges and bits and pieces are going to need to have some wood effects there. And I painted the water right round, it looks kind of cool. I like it with the um, wrecked bits of deck with the water underneath it, that's kind of neat. Um, they've been done with uh, Cantor Blue and Caliban Green like I normally use. 
Now we're going to leave all that to dry um, because the water will need a gloss mod, podge coating and I've got some more details and bits and pieces to do. Apart from anything else, the wood, when this is all, when the water's all dry, I'm going to stain this with bile tan green uh, and a couple of other shades and, and washes to weather it and make the whole thing that look that much more unpleasant. And then I think I'm going to flock a bit of the top of the rock. To have a bit of a kind of like a weedy, slimy, seaweedy kind of effect on it. And uh, that'll be pretty much there, really. I mean, it's kind of there. So, finishing off details. Nice little centrepiece for a scenario. Coming along good. Right, let it all dry. Going to bed. See you later. Okay, paintwork is all dry. So, I'm now going to go for. I put some browns into these gouges. And I'm now going to go with. No, no, gloss. And Bartan Green to do the weathered wet manky rotting in the sea kind of like look. We can give that a go. <coughs> Check this out. So, water has been painted on. I've I've done all the washes and stuff, and the mirt and the dry, and that's kind of come out well with um, where we used uh, Nolan oil gloss and Bartan green, which is kind of cool. So it looks manky and dirty now, not too much. I've also put uh, kind of weedy, slimy stuff on here. I used uh, Sterling mud and all flesh contrast paints mix them together and then I've added the flock directly to that which is kind of good so now the only thing I really need left to do to this model to finish it off is uh, give the water a gloss coat of Mod Podge which will then make it all shiny and match all the other bits of scenery oh, it's going to look really cool this week I am going to get out all my Benfield scenery put it all together on the same table it's going to look really really neat for the first time since I've been since in 2022 it's going to be the first time I've put out Ben Fliot in 2022 with all the new stuff so the Alchemist's um, workshop and the fighting pit and the uh, 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 temple to Mananan and the uh, different houses that I've done this year and this ruin and the other the other shipwreck and then all the stuff I've done previously so watch out for that in the future that's going to be really cool that's going to be a feature a new Benfleot Village on the Marsh feature video and that kind of thing uh, is going to be coming your way um, uh, in the next little while that's going to be kind of cool but um, right now I'm going to finish this off with some gloss Mod Podge there is the stuff, the gloss Mod Podge. I'm literally going to just brush it on to all of the blue surfaces to give that wet look. And then this will be pretty much done. I could pick out some of the metal here, I suppose. Um, but otherwise, pretty much there now. All good. So there you go. Um, it's done, it's finished. I'm really pleased. Um, ridiculously simple model, this. Uh, you know, um, um, thank you, Playmobil. Because pretty much you did most of the work for me in the first place. I mean, I only had to cut out the rock, cut out the base, and stick it all together, and paint the whole thing, really. Um, and it's come out really good. I reckon I probably could have added a load more detail, extra bits of wreckage, and all sorts of other stuff. But the purpose, without a doubt, of this particular piece is it, for it to be the centre point of um, a game. Uh, it's the location where the uh, both sides are trying to loot the sunken ship and then that way the sunken ship needs to have enough space on board for the figures to be able to move around the fight over and if you've got two ships or you've got a bunch of islands and walkways and things this is the central bit where the fight takes place so what it really needs is space which is what i've kind of achieved with this i'm really really happy with it so from that point of view Simple model uh, goes to show that you can do something pretty easy. I reckon 
pretty much anybody watching this video can have a go at this project without any problem at all. All you got to do is find the pirate wreck on eBay or Facebook Marketplace or, or somewhere else. Uh, and then, frankly, you're in business because, I mean, what else did it take? It took Playmobil toy, off-cut of polystyrene. Um, I mean, I use high-density XPS foam, but you could use low-density polystyrene out of uh, any kind of packaging. Polyfiller, Mod Podge, bunch of glue, job done. Uh, a very effective piece of terrain indeed. So, <clears throat> um, I don't know how many pieces of terrain I've made for Benfleot this year in 2022. The when uh, I think I made the, I started off the year with the three piece of terrain challenge, which didn't work out and ended up doing the lighthouse separately. But there was a lighthouse, a bunch of houses, another house on stilts. Then there was the. Uh, um, a temple over here so that's kind of like four and then there was the alchemist uh home on another island five and the fighting pit six and now this bit seven i've probably doubled the size of benfield this year <coughs> we're edging closer and closer to a campaign my guys uh in, to be fighting in the benfield area and all this kind of stuff and the next mission uh, and you're going to get a sneak preview of that in a second actually is putting it all out on the table and making sure we know what it looks like. The Benfield table is the table I'm going to be taking to Salute in 2023 as well. And if you are planning on going to Salute in 2023 and you're a Barrows and Badgers fan or just a Magrathia Builder Worlds fan, make sure you drop in and say hello to us. But hey, that's a long way away in April. I'll be plugging that some more. So thank you very much indeed for watching this build. I hope you've enjoyed it and you found it really useful. I know quite a few people do and there will be people who will be inspired to go off and do that. I think apart from anything else it's a way of expanding the number of scenarios that are playable in the Burrows and Badgers main rulebook. It's taking one of those tiny little paragraphs uh, off the wandering table and turning it into a game in its own right which I think is going to be a lot of fun. So thanks very much for watching. Uh, please do make sure you leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. Give us a like and a subscribe and that kind of thing and don't forget if you want to support my channel more you want to be able to provide me with uh, a few quid so I can buy more bits of junk like this from Playmobil turning into models then do please consider signing up at patreon.com slash Magathea Builder Worlds um, otherwise apart from that I reckon it's probably time now to just shut up and go and have a look at this on the table with everything else thanks for watching I'll see you next time <laughs>